So I'm sitting here enjoying the nice fresh air in one of my favorite flips that I think I've ever done. Also one of the most exciting. Oh my goodness, did anyone notice what just happened? I didn't notice until I rewatched the video, but look over my shoulder. There's two deer fighting right behind me. Let's watch that again, check it out. So I'm sitting here enjoying the nice fresh air in one of my favorite flips that I think I've ever done. Also one of the most exciting flips that I've ever done. It was, it, it came with a lot of twists and turns and it was sitting on the market for a long time. Nobody was touching it. I was the only one willing to take it on. And it actually ended up being one of my most profitable flips as well. So check this out. So from the inside, it looks like a normal flip. So look at these before and after pics really quick before I show you the real issue. The house has been sitting on the market for a year. And the reason is, is because no banks would loan on this property. So that eliminated 90% of the buyers because there was a landslide in the backyard and the previous owner had sued the engineer, the developer, and the city. And so none of the engineers in the town wanted to work with anybody on this property. They didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. There were several other challenges with this property as well. But look at this landslide. It slid, this and this used to be here and here. The ground level used to be here and it slid all the way down to here, about six to eight feet or so. Uh, look at this from a different angle. You can see the ground level was up here. The top of that retaining wall was up there and it slid all the way down to here. So you can see the kind of movement and this happened all the way along here. Because this was an apparent good deal and it was on the market for a year, I think every agent in the state showed this house multiple times. In addition to that stigma that was growing on the property, uh, we needed to redo that retaining wall. We needed to figure out a way to get equipment back into this yard when there was no room on either side of the house and we can't come across the creek. Big problems there. We needed to fix the deck. We needed to rehab the interior and all this needed to be done during COVID when there was already a labor shortage in a conjunction with a housing boom. So those were the challenges that I was up against on this property. One thing I've learned though over the years is the more challenges that I can hurdle, the more profit I can make. So I had four goals for this property going into it. One was to discover the cause of the slide and see if I could fix it. Uh, number two was to be to make this property profitable. Number three is to make it financeable. And because I wanted to do number four, which is get all my money back out of this property. So this was a bank owned property. I offered them $191,000 and we got it. So this whole part of the house slumped off and took out the deck with it. Need this uh, retaining wall and a couple of dead man's back here hey Timmy um, let me know what you think about this I don't I kind of had to guess on how much elevation there was from the creek do you think there's about 30 feet or do you think it was less than that it was hard to sell it to say from the photos but anyways let me know what you think if this looks about what what you were thinking of um, these are just bushes on top so ignore that but this would be the retaining wall the concrete retaining wall that you were thinking about maybe a flat area here maybe we just slope it down the creek it all depends on how high this is from the creek down here to the elevation maybe we may want to do like uh, another terrace here so anyway let me just think so my first hurdle was the property was not financeable so i needed to come up with cash i was able to reach out to one of my private money lenders and they lent on the property uh, I took care of the repairs out of my own pocket, but they took care of the initial purchase price. So that was an easy fix. So I had to show the lender a vision, what I thought the property was worth and how what my game plan was to get there. Hey, just turn around, go behind that pee right behind that tree. I've been doing everything remotely and COVID had just broke out and they started to institute a mask mandate in Arizona. And so I thought, you know what, let's just go up you know, we can do, I work remotely, so I, let's just go up there and see if we can manage this project from there. So we did, we went up to Montana and got going. That's where they get sent for time now. Get <laughs> out! Get me out! <laughs> so one thing I think is worth mentioning, before I close on the property and during my due diligence, 
I was told, and I think every buyer that probably looked at this property was told, that it was going to cost north of $200,000 to repair this backyard. And I actually found the original documents that were from the court case through public uh, information request, and the construction company quoted out at $170,000 to do this. And I called around to a couple other construction companies and was quoted north of $200,000 for this property to be repaired. But I knew I could do way better than that number. I mean, $170,000 is a lot of dirt work. So I didn't let that scare me. I had plan A, B, C, and D for this property. So I went ahead and closed on it. We went up there and got to work. And some play. So that's it. Uh, like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode where a bunch of crazy things happen. Here's a quick sneak peek into some of that. But uh, sometimes I feel like I'm in an orchard and I'm walking around and there's all this ripe fruit and I'm picking it and then there's all these people around me that are walking around saying, where's the fruit? We'd like some fruit. And it's right there, like this house. It had been on the market for a year. Nobody had grabbed it. It was an awesome deal. And I wanted to ask myself, why is nobody grabbing this stuff? And that's why I'm doing these videos. The more knowledge you have, the more opportunities there are. Um, I think there's a lot of deals out there that I just think people aren't maybe thinking outside the box enough. And you know, if you can think outside the box and don't take everything you hear at first as gospel. Do your due diligence, like this quote that I had for $200,000 to back do the backyard. Uh, you just gotta take things with a grain of salt and verify, verify them yourself. Use, use just common sense with a lot of this stuff. Usually for us, it's a matter of money. You know, if we had infinite funds, then you know we could grab all these deals but you know as the money is becomes available we grab the deals and there's just plenty out there and if you're just willing to take a little bit of a risk and do your homework and make smart moves there's lots of money to be made hopefully this helps and we'll see you in the next video